So this is the question. And in tackling circuit questions like this, uh, you have to use Kirchhoff's uh, rules. Um, and so some of the simpler, easier circuit questions can be done by simplifying your circuit. So you add registers that are in series as a series, and you add registers that are in parallel as parallel. And you can do that with the simplest of the circuit questions. But in most general situations, you will find that um, that's not possible. And this is one of those general situations. You can see that none of these registers are in series because if you imagine a current flowing through them, then it doesn't have to go through any other register. So R1 is not in series with R2 or R3. <coughs> and same deal with it. like <coughs> R3 is not in series with R2 because after current goes through here, it can go through R2 or R1. So you look at, could they be in parallel? And they are not either, because um, these passkey batteries change the voltages at this end so that no, no two registers have voltages at their two end points to be the same with each other. So, so all these things are neither in series nor in parallel, uh, which means you have to use the general problem solving tool in circuit which is the Kirchhoff's rules. By the way, I've already noted <laughs> pronunciation of this name. Uh, so I think the correct pronunciation of German name is Kirchhoff. And uh, you'll see it pronounced as, as Kirchhoff by some people and maybe Kirchhoff by some other people. It's some guy's name's rules. Um, so there are two rules. Uh, I like to write down the junction rule first because uh, when you use a junction rule, there's a very clear guideline you can use to figure out how many times you should use it. And once you've used the junction rule, then you can figure out, okay, how many times do I need to use the loop rule? So that the goal in using Kirchhoff's rules is you want to use them exactly the right amount number of times to come up with the exactly right number of equations that are independent that give you an independent system of equations. So here I'm glancing and seeing I have one, two, three unknowns. So I'd like to come up with three equations involving these three unknowns and not one more and not one less. So the junction rule that I'll be using, it says this, when given a junction, junction like this here, when you look at uh, currents going into a junction, you add up all the currents going in, they add up to all the currents going out. So let's do that first. It looks like in this question, they already labeled the currents for us. So, um, so, so we'll just use the label, not come up with something else and confuse ourselves potentially. You see two junctions here and here. And really any point can be labeled as a junction, but unless you have more than two branches coming off of it, it'll be trivial junction where you say, oh yeah, current coming in equals current going up. That didn't tell you anything. So I have these two junctions and the criterion I uh, tell you to use is that you want to leave one of the junctions unused because once you, um, as you use your junctions, if you use the very final junction you have remaining, that last equation you get from that last junction rule will give you an equation that's dependent on what you've already written down. So I'm just going to use this uh, one junction to write down my first equation, uh, which will be, so current coming in is I1 is equal to, uh, oh wait, uh, I2 is also labeled as going in. So I1 plus I2 is equal to current going out, I3. This is my junction rule equation. It's the one and only one here. And uh, so this tells me um, if I have only these three unknowns, I will need two more equations. So I'm going to try to use the loop rule twice uh, uh, in a way that I, it won't give me a system of dependent equations. And hopefully they, those two loop rule equations will involve all the unknowns and we can solve for it. So what the loop rule says is, so 
so you have to define a loop. So imagine I've defined a loop that goes something like here. So starting from this point, imagine going here, coming around, and closing the loop this way. So going over a loop like that, I can imagine adding up all the changes in voltage. Each circuit element I go over potentially introduces voltage change. And when I add them all up, I get zero. It's um, kind of, I hope that makes sense. Because if you are starting from this point, it has, some, it has some voltage, you add up all the changes, then you should come back to the voltage you started off from. So, so let me use this as my first tool. So this will give me my equation too. So starting from here, I just uh, go through each element. So I'm going across the battery from negative to positive terminal. That'll give me um, plus V1 of a voltage change. And as I go across the register R1, I'm going in the same direction as the current labeled. Um, so that'll give me a voltage drop. Uh, that's given by Ohm's law, which says change in voltage across the register is current times the resistance. So I say minus current uh, I1 times the resistance R1. Okay, my loop is not done yet. Uh, I have to go across here. Now the direction of the loop I'm going, it's opposite the direction of current. So here I'll get a voltage rise. Plus I2, R2, and I'm coming back to the same point, so that should equal zero. So that's my equation too. And since I need one more equation, I'm going to use the loop rule one more time. And there are a few different loops you can choose. I guess I'll choose the most uh, sensible or simplest one, which is, okay, I imagine starting from here, go this way, and complete the loop this way. Uh, that's not crazy, sensible. Um, so, so let me write it down. So, and as you are coming up with these ropes, really the number one thing to watch out for is how that loop over, overlaps your other loops. There might be some overlap, that's fine. It's, not, it's unavoidable and it's fine. But uh, the loop that you are defining shouldn't be completely overlapped by other stuff. Um, so, yeah. so watch out for that as you define your loop. Okay, I'm starting from here, going across the battery from negative to positive terminal. So I have plus uh, V2 of voltage change. As I go across here, I gotta figure out, so that's my direction of current. So that direction of current will be this way. So I'm going with the current. So uh, I have uh, minus I3, R3. I get a voltage drop. And now uh, here, as I go across R2 this way, it's the same direction as how I2 is labeled. So I'm going to get a voltage drop of minus I2, R2. And all of that adds up to zero. That's my third equation. Now, normally, um, so I guess the standard way to wrap up this question would be to do the algebra by hand. Um, <laughs> but let me, let me not do it the standard way. Let me show you uh, the use of this tool, uh, which will really, I think this is helpful for people who feel like their algebra is in their strongest suit. And if you feel like you are being held back in how well you do in this physics class by how comfortable you feel with algebra, this tool is for you. It's uh, like a calculator for symbolic algebra. So I've launched the Sage Math. Um, let me, so if you want to look at some documentation or help for how to do this, what you should do is you should look at help uh, for a function called the solve. That will give you basic material. Um, when it comes up, it will give you some examples of how that's used. So read through it. Examples yeah, show up here. So it shows how you define variables and how you use the solve function with a system of equations. So you can look at that. I'm gonna do it my way. <laughs> First, declare the variables. These are all the symbols I'm gonna use. Some of them are unknowns, uh, like I2 and I3. And even the known quantities, I'm gonna give them a variable because um, this will help me get a symbolic answer and then plug in numbers. So that's all the current. Uh, I need the voltages. And I need the resistances, R1, R2, R3. I think that's everything. Okay, uh, let me define my equations. My first equation is I1 
plus I2 is equal to I3. Mind the, uh, it, this is a kind of programming thing. This is what's called the assignment uh, operation. It's defining this variable to be this thing, which has an equality uh, logical operation there. Uh, it says this is logically equal to this, or numerically equal to yeah. So that's my equation one. Let me write down my equation two. Uh, that's a V1 minus I1 times R1 plus I2 times R2 is equal to zero. Equation three, V2 minus I3 times R3 minus I2 times R2 is equal to zero. So, um, so those are my equations. And I you solve this way. I say solve this is a system of equations that contain that um, that describes this system, the three equations that are hopefully independent. And I want to solve for it looks like uh, I don't know v1, i2, or i3. So those are the unknowns I will solve for. And the program Sage Math will assume that all the other quantities are known. So when I do this, it'll return results for v1, i2, and i3 that, uh, uh, that's uh, in terms of the, the remaining variables that I've used in my system of equations. Yeah, so that's those. This is my, oh, so it's a, you gotta kind of look at it. It's a nested list. It's a list of lists. And the, the outer list has only one element, which is um, the, your solutions. Uh, it does it this way because some system of equations will give you multiple possible answers. Here, there's only one possible answer. It's these. So, uh, so let me do it this way. Um, I'm going to take the solution, put it into a variable. So the first element that'll give me the one uh, system of solution stuff. And uh, of those, the first element is V1. Uh, wait, ah, that's not the first element. First element is V1. Second element is v I2. Third element is I3. Now I need the numerical values to um, plug uh, to plug them into the answer thing. So to get a numerical value, so when I do this, I have this expression. And I can plug in numbers to these symbols this way. I can substitute these symbols with the numbers. So I say substitute R1 equal to the value of R1 they gave us, 12 ohm. R, uh, let me just specify all in order. R2 is 6 ohm. R3 is 5 ohm. And uh, they gave us the current I1, which is 2 ampere. And they gave us a voltage V2, which is 21 volt. Okay, I hope that uh, everything, um, we'll see. And I'm putting this dot so that it will do a decimal approximation, which is a lot simpler. Yeah, okay, so V1 must be 18 volts. And the fact that this is not negative means um, like this polarity is correct. Okay, let's do the same thing with the second answer here. So that's uh, I2. Okay, one ampere. Does that make sense? So, um, so I three must be three ampere. Let's double check to be sure. Yeah, good. So eighteen one three. Is this a randomized at all? I might have just given you answer for all versions. Oh well. <laughs> But uh, I, I do want you to learn how to use this tool because it's a really useful, especially for systems that are more complicated.